Hi, this is Danny Ryan, and welcome to the Three Will Podcast. Today, I've got Pete Skelly here with me. Uh, Pete is our Director of Technology for Three Will. Thank you for joining me, Pete. Thanks, Danny. Awesome. We've got uh, got a really cool subject to cover with you guys today, and it has to do with uh, a recent event that we had here at Three Will, and it was for um, it was an internal event. We have lots of external events, but sometimes we have internal events. And this one was about a hackathon. And this was back in November uh, that Pete and the labs group put on for us. And so we wanted to talk a little bit about that hackathon, what happened, who got injured, um, <laughs> <laughs> what, what happened, did we... Was it a success? Uh, did you, no, most importantly, did you give me a product out of this <laughs> that I can go sell? No, no, no product. No uh, product. It, it helped me. I don't know if it'll help you. Oh, jeez. So. <laughs> this is going to be a short conversation then. Um, so let's hit it at a lot high level. What is what's a hackathon? You know, what, give me sort of the high level details on. on sure. That. So uh, our internal hackathons, we've done a couple of them. Um, a couple last year, uh, this one this year, and really a hackathon is a group of folks getting together to either develop some sort of product or learn about some new technologies. And so typically, you know, there's a lot of um, outside hackathons where a company might get together and, and try to, you know, hack on a product idea mm -hmm. and I think internally we're you know we're constantly trying to be a learning organization and learn new things but uh, our, our internal hackathons tend to be what do we see as emerging technologies mm -hmm. and what do we want to learn so um, you know as consultants uh, day to day um, sometimes we're working on you know the client's current need and that's not always cutting edge you know and developers and consultants a lot of times uh, they want to know what's new what's fresh and this is a way for them to kind of scratch that itch mm -hmm. um, without having to you know do something on a customer's dime so to speak yep. and uh, kind of you know ensure we're doing the right things for our, our customers and, and it just may be an older technology on the on the customer side uh, but keep it abreast of how to do things new ways uh, it's just a good thing uh, overall for for everybody uh, developers and customers so very nice and so what were some of the uh, as people were looking to do this what were some of the technologies that people wanted to learn so it's all, it was pretty challenging to come up with you know a set of technologies to go after and, and things that there's so much changing these days but with a lot of our clients asking for things like office add-ins, um, a lot of the, the kind of branding and mobile, um, what we tried to do was come up with a list of technologies in advance that people were uh, either unaware of or had heard of but hadn't had a chance to play with, all of those types of things. So we picked um, at the start of the, the hackathon, basically we did this on, the, on a Friday night. It was November 13th. Um, and so we started around uh, five o'clock mm -hmm. on uh, Thursday or Friday, excuse me. And you know, so it was after work, and we just said, you know, from five to about eleven o'clock, let's get a group of folks together and focus on some things. The first thing we did was was have a discussion around what technologies folks wanted to use, and and not everybody in Three Wheel had been exposed to things like Git. Um, we use Visual Studio Team Services, uh, it used to be Visual Studio Online. Uh, we use that pretty frequently on a lot of projects, um, but not everybody had access or had used Git and Visual Studio Team Services at the same time. Uh, not a lot of folks had had experience with developing add-ins and with some of the recent changes with Office add-ins and SharePoint add-ins, we wanted to take a stab at that. Um, so we kind of whiteboarded all these different technologies, things like Office Fabric UI. Um, some folks wanted to learn a little bit more about OAuth. Some folks wanted to learn about the, S the SharePoint REST APIs. So we whiteboarded all these different technologies and kind of circled a few that were critical that folks wanted to get something out of the night. Um, and then uh, shortly after that, we just said, okay, well then what can we do that would use those technologies and kind of 
carve off something that we could accomplish in you know four to five hours the next four to five hours nice and so um you ended up focusing in on an add-in is that is yep. that what was it a was it a word add-in was it an outlook or what does it or, or did people i guess did people focus in on building one thing and everybody added a piece to it or was it everybody was building one thing so from a sort of a process or design perspective we threw uh so once we had the technologies on a whiteboard we uh -huh. started throwing out some ideas of well what would we want to do uh would we want to do a a word um, task paid added that um, you know one of the pains that we have internally is we like to use wikis but the sharepoint editor for wikis sometimes give you gives you fits well we had an idea of well let's turn the word editor into a wiki style editor inside a document library that was one idea we had another idea to do uh, an outlook add-in uh, another idea to do a an excel add-in that actually might calculate some azure time um, so compute and storage time using azure um, we finally settled on an outlook add-in because it was something that um, I had an experience with um, some of the technologies, also with add-ins um, for Outlook, and also it was from a scenario or a user scenario perspective, it was something that I could kind of pick a, a topic and actually go after. So we chose a, a, quote, candidate management solution. And the scenario that we kind of talked about was, I'll get, uh, so one of my other roles is, is hiring manager. And so I'll get emails from folks with resumes as attachments, um, recruiting companies, and, and other things. And a lot of the times those, my kind of process of dealing with those is to store the resume in SharePoint. And I have a list in SharePoint that I actually manage all those candidates in. And so I thought it'd be great to say, okay, when I receive an email, uh, it'd be awesome if I could just have an Outlook add-in as a task pane add-in that lit up when one of those emails came in and actually you know automatically filled out a form with the use, the candidate's name the position they were looking for uh, what whether it was a recruiting company or a website those types of things and nice. then automatically attached the resume to the resume document library that i have so we kind of said okay that would cover almost every technology that we listed out on the whiteboard so that's how we landed on doing an outlook add-in um, using some of those technologies, it sounds like extremely self-serving. It was when you run the when you run the uh, hackathon, you get to choose those things. So, <laughs> actually, it was a group decision. Uh, it was pretty interesting to see it fall out that way. I was happy about it, but yeah, uh, yeah it kind of fell out that way. Nice. So, um, so everybody. So it's your again with with creating this. Was it so? Did you divide and conquer from there, or how did how did you go about? Um, what were the next steps from there? Let me. That was a really interesting part. So, I kind of described high level what the scenario was. Um, we we had eight people um, show up. So we essentially said, let's take it and split it into four different parts. Um, two two guys took the. Um, UI portion. So uh -huh. they were going to focus on using the Office Fabric UI to actually lay out a UI that looked and felt uh, looked and felt consistent with the Office, um, you know, Outlook look and feel. Um, the saving of a document was two other folks, um, and the uh, authentication portion. Uh, making sure that we were using OAuth, that we were getting the right, because basically we wanted to go back to a SharePoint uh, repository. Um, interacting with OAuth was another two people. And then we had a couple folks that, that played, you know, multiple roles. And I was kind of playing the, the integration lead, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, helping with a, a few different things, but also serving as, you know, we were using Git uh, in Visual Studio Team Services. So... It was new to some folks, so basically serving, you know, kind of helping out with that role as well as we were doing pull requests into Visual Studio Team Services. So as people would finish a little feature or a little piece of functionality, um, we were kind of learning how to uh, create a pull request, and then I was merging in those pull requests, and then everybody would pull those changes back down to their local environments to, to keep going through the dev cycles. 
So it's really collaborative. We broke it up basically into four four different sections so we could work in parallel. So is this a new way of working together? Or was this something you discovered? Or is, was this something that you wanted to try out to see what that was like? It's So Git's been around for a while. Um, typically in, you know, most enterprise shops uh, that we've been involved in, a lot of them have been classically uh, team foundation server for, for uh, source control, or they'll use subversion. In the past, they've used subversion. A lot of folks have done things like that. Um, but more and more with uh, Microsoft moving to open source, things like uh, the Office PMP patterns and practices, um, the VS Code uh, editor that Microsoft just recently open sourced, all of ASP.NET is in GitHub. Um, so using Git and processes like pull requests is mm -hmm. kind of a critical skill these days. And so some folks had not even used Git ever. Um, and some folks had used it, but not sort of, you know, gone through and understood the mechanics of it. So we were trying to learn both a new way of working uh -huh. um, and kind of that integration process, but a new tool in Visual Studio Team Services and Git. So, so how long was this? It was four hours? So we, you know, between picking the technologies uh -huh. and the process uh, or the, the kind of application we were going to go after, that was about 40 minutes. Okay. And then uh, we started about six o'clock, uh, started coding and finished around 1130. So when, when did the keg show up? <laughs> no keg. We did do the pizza and, oh, and soda thing, but uh, no soda. keg. So, yeah, I, I, you know, as as a self serving person, I wanted to get my outlook at and done, not have everybody drinking all night. So, oh, but, but, <laughs> no beer. <laughs> but it was Friday night, so it was a scotch. I, I know. <laughs> I, there's some real growth going on here, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was the? Um, tell me the output of all this. What what did it, you end up with by the end of the night? Um, really interesting stuff. I mean, by the end of the night from the technologies we chose, um, it was pretty interesting Four groups of, of people, uh, working in parallel. We had, uh, over 400 lines of, uh, JavaScript written to kind of work on the authentication and, and get, uh, the actual login to SharePoint kind of working seamlessly. Um, all of the code for the actual Outlook compose, uh, or excuse me, the read add-in for Outlook to kind of look at the email, mm. um, show up uh, um, as a task pane when I received a specific type of email. So some rules around when that add-in should show up. Um, using Git, we had about, uh, which I thought was pretty impressive. It sounds like a low number, but across four hours and eight people, we had 14 different pull requests um, that actually got done throughout. So learning to work in those short cycles, learning how to use Git, uh, the differences in branching and what branches mean in Git and some of those types of things. Um, I was really impressed with the Office Fabric uh, or UI Fabric or Fabric UI. Um, that was really neat to see how uh, an add-in can be branded and customized to look and feel like Outlook or like Word and kind of keep a very consistent look and feel. And everybody likes Bootstrap, but it just has, um, you know, when you're doing using a Bootstrap site, it's very obvious that it's Bootstrap, right? So using some of the Office Fabric UI uh, really made it kind of pop very quickly. Um, it was uh, another thing that we learned was uh, just getting the exposure to the out uh, the add-in model. So using JavaScript to manipulate Outlook, um, but along the way, some folks were finding other things about, well, this is the way you would do it in Outlook, but they were finding other articles, doing some research, quick research about how to do things in Excel and how to do things in Word. So it was very interesting from that perspective. And then really, um, I was impressed at how quickly everybody kind of just dove in to Git and Visual Studio Team Services not knowing anything about pull requests or not knowing any of that. Um, everybody was really eager to kind of do that. So it's really interesting over the span of, you know, five and a half hours to get something actually accomplished by the end. Um, you know, last check-ins were around 1130 quarter to 12 by 12 o'clock. Uh, I did a demo of receiving an email. Uh, the task pane would show up when I received an email that had a very specific format from one of the recruiting companies. Mm -hmm. It would pre-populate the candidate's name, the type, the position they were uh, requesting, 
uh, and then I could actually just click a button and it would save their information and then save the file, their resume to a resumes folder. So it was, you know, streamline the process that I go through uh, just for tracking those individuals and getting the process started, streamlined it really to basically a button click instead of me having to do about four or five different things to get that into a list in a document library. So are you using it right now? Um, I actually started enhancing it. Um, mm -hmm. There was a couple of minor issues with it. Um, but uh, started enhancing it, and it just, it's about ready for me to use in quote production. So, and yep, was this you're you're sitting with a uh, a Mac in front of you? Is uh -huh. this an Outlook add-in that is a new Outlook add-in that works with the Outlook mm -hmm. for Mac? Yep. So I use it on a Mac. Use it on a Mac. I also um, tried it on my iPad. Uh, works flawlessly inside of uh, out, you know OWA Outlook uh, Web Access from Office Three Sixty Five. How do you like them apples? Yeah, one thing that was interesting is we tried to use um, the new um, Yeoman generator from the Office Dev uh, team. And we just didn't have enough time. Um, we sort of cut bait after about 20 minutes trying mm -hmm. to do it across platforms. So mm -hmm. we had Windows developers and we had uh, folks like me that use strange thing called Macs uh, in mm -hmm. the room. So we wanted to use Visual Studio Code and the Yeoman generator, the, the generator dash office Yeoman generator to actually build it and go through the whole cycle. But we ran into a couple of minor issues unrelated to the technology. It was people's systems. Um, okay. So people's laptops that precluded us from doing that. So it was, Visual Studio, uh, and I was actually doing all the integration on my Mac, not using Visual Studio or a VM. So, kind of proving you know teams can work off of disparate technologies. Really, really a cool experience. Nice, nice. Well, thank you for doing this. Yeah. It sounded yeah. like it was worth the time that people had spent. I know where we're we're not big into working on the weekends and that sort of thing. So it sounded there was a personal investment that yeah. everybody had to make to. Yep. To do this, but it seems like it was fruitful. Yeah, I hope uh, you know. Folks said they got some really good things out of it, and learned a lot. So uh, we'll end up doing more. I think we're uh, doing a little bit of a retrospective on uh, what could work better. I know folks mm -hmm. on Friday night. Uh, a lot of folks have families and things, so we're trying to figure out some alternative ways of getting a, a little bit different spin. Maybe next time. Nice. So we're definitely going to do more. Nice. And um, now that I'm thinking, this just came up, I think maybe a good topic for you and I to talk about uh, in the next podcast would be uh, the developer challenge. I don't know. It'd be nice just to talk about what, what we do there. Oh, from a recruiting perspective. Yeah. Recruiting yeah, perspective. yeah how we recruit is, uh, is I think, a little unique. So mm -hmm. maybe going through that developer challenge and, and what we, uh, we kind of ask folks to do and mm -hmm. why. Mm -hmm. would be really good yeah that'd be a great topic so we're we are hiring if you want to do some neat stuff like uh hackathons and really stay up on the latest stuff uh, uh we're we're definitely looking for new hires to, uh, right now it sounds mm -hmm. like senior folks are yeah we've uh looking for right now three senior consultants okay. or senior software engineers okay. they're kind of the same level uh role subtle differences but both uh but three senior positions right now three will.com slash apply we'll get that mm -hmm. whole process started and it sounds like it'll may is it uh does this tie into your add-in at all uh that ties directly into the add-in oh, good segue there huh? look yeah, at that, that you like that closure <laughs> tight loop we have a tight Luke here. So if you're listening to this and uh, you're interested and you're, we're primarily out of the Southeast, a uh, big presence in the Atlanta area, we are definitely looking, would love to hear from you. Um, and now that I have you captured audience, I've got Pete here in my room with me. And I've got to <laughs> capture. And I, by the way, I think the whole thing was very productive because I wasn't there. <laughs> That's why you got so much time. <laughs> the sales guy and marketing guy was not in the Let's room, just so. say if I was around, I would, I would ask for pretty pictures of things. And all sorts of stuff that you guys have got. Like, can you just you've been proud alone? of us. The Office Fabric UI really paid dividends. It, it, uh, it makes great. it look, it makes it pop pretty quick. You'll have so. to show this off to me next time I'm yeah. over by your desk. I'd love to, absolutely love to see it. So, but uh, this, I, um, I appreciate you doing this podcast. I would love to think about doing a podcast. Uh, you know, in the future, I, you got so much stuff in your head that I love just sharing with other folks. So, yeah, I, I will mention, 
in late October, I did a talk at uh, Atlanta Code Camp about uh-huh. office add-ins, yeah. and uh, you can actually visit uh, AtlantaCodeCamp.com and get the slide deck, and it goes into some of the things for office add-ins and all that kind of stuff. So there's some more information out I'll there. I have to grab that. I don't think we have that deck up on our website, so I'll yeah, grab yeah. that and put that okay. up on our website. Uh-huh. So. Well, cool. Well, thanks, everybody. Hopefully, you learned a little bit about uh, maybe you're trying to run a hackathon internally or um, uh, you're just interested in learning more about how we stay on top of things here at Three Will. Thank you for uh, taking the time to listen in here and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Pete, for joining me. Yeah. Pleasure. Betcha. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Bye-bye now.